it now. Let's uh, just open with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for just an opportunity to gather in your house tonight. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do right here. Father, tonight I'm praying to change lives. Father, I'm praying for an opportunity. Father, just to hear from you. Father, you are our audience. And Father, may everything that is said, done, sung, played, thought tonight, Father, bring you glory. Father, lift up my Lord. Others of the praise team tonight as they're going to lead us in worship. And Father, I pray that you will use them as your vessels. Father, draw us close to you. We worship you. You are good. In Jesus' name.
All right, this next song is like, it's a very deep song. And I kind of like really take this one personal because of the fact that it's one thing I don't play around with is worship and everything. So I want y'all to just, you know, feel this song. Let this song just, you know, meditate inside of you, okay? It's a very simple song. It's called I Give Myself Away. It's simple as that, all right? Oh, 
y'all to really meditate on this song because it's not a joke matter at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Do you believe that tonight? Seriously. Let's be, let's be real. Do you believe it? Yes? No? Do you believe it? I think we want to believe it. I do. I think we really want to give everything in our power to say, yes, I believe it. But the sad truth is, is that most of us don't. Most of us don't. Now, Travis, let's go back. Let's look at this, this entire passage once again. And we're going to break this down. Because, you see, it is my belief, it is of my opinion, that if we believe the words that are on this scripture, and we're really fixed to take a deeper look at another passage tonight, that if we believe this, that our world would not look like the world it is. Our daily routine would not look like it does. It says, in the beginning was the Word. It was Jesus. The Word. Capital W. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All together. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Do we believe it? Do we believe it tonight? I asked you earlier to consider the phrase, book it now. And I ask you, do you believe what we just read? How many of you have ever played 21 or five card stud or anything to where you gambled? Might have been pennies or peanuts, band aids, and not anything. But you have in your hand something that you were guaranteed, or at least you thought were guaranteed to win. And you were willing to risk a couple band-aids here, three or four peanuts there, a couple quarters there, Taco Bell bucks here, in order to say, I say, my what is in my hand, I I'm going to lock it in place. I'm willing to go for it. Have we done that? Come on. Come on. Okay. How many of you have won every time? I uh, will talk later. I don't believe it. <laughs> I just went for it. Oh, no. Now, Michael McVeigh, he has probably come closer. I've put myself through college for quite a while playing cards. I was your age. I needed something to do. I play cards. You go to a racetrack and you've got the scoop on the horses that are going to win or to place or to show. And people put large amounts of money on four-legged beasts to run faster than other four-legged beasts in order to get to the finish line. And they risk everything, they are booking it now because they believe in that horse. Never been to a horse track. Don't want them. No desire to There's two in Arkansas. And it draws so many people. It takes away so much money from so many families that really need to be buying groceries instead of wasting their horses. A few years back, Regis Philbin came into play with a new game show on TV. Remember that? Is that your final answer? Remember that? Final answer, Regis. Final answer. This is it. This is the one. I'm sure. Remember that? 
So if I were to ask you, is this your final answer? Are you willing to lay it down in a place that you're going to look at now? That you too, too truly believe that in the beginning was God, the Word was God, the Word was with God, He made all things, He was life, and in Him was the life, was the light of men. Could you say that you are locking it down? Could you do that? If you did, you wouldn't do things that you do. You wouldn't say things that you say. You wouldn't go places that you go. Am I right? I mean, come on. Am I right? See, what's sad is that over the years, we have students that come to H2O, and then they'll be in here there on Thursday night, and they're rocking and rolling, and they're jamming, and they're uh huh, uh huh. And about three hours later, they're on their way to family to keep them. It's not a godly place. It's not a place for godly young men and godly young women. Am I right? Somebody tell me I'm right. Or did that hurt too much? You see, we get all Jesus y when we've got problems. And we'll put prayer requests out. And we'll list them on our Facebook. And we'll text people, we can do this, we can do that. And we're all ooey gooey, and it's Jesus this and Jesus that. And the very second things are get done, and things are all back in place, and the world has set back on its pedestal, those Facebook statuses change. Do y'all see them too, or is it just me? Is it just my Facebook? Okay, good. Glad you're not. See, in Matthew's Gospel, we get a glimpse of somebody that was willing to come out of the, the norm and to admit, to book it in place, who Jesus really was. And he was willing to commit himself above and beyond the rest. I'm in Matthew chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, jump on over there with me. Matthew chapter 16. I love it. Dude's name was Peter. Simon Peter. Verse 5, chapter 16, Matthew says this. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring faith. To bring faith. To bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread, but Jesus Aware of this, Jesus said this, Oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand? Disciples kind of had a dumb one. Or the seven loaves for the four thousand? And how many baskets you gather? How is it that you fail to understand that I do not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of the bread, but to beware of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Verse 13 says, When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, pay attention to this question, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And he asked the group of disciples this question. There's 12. Now we already know that these 12 disciples had already seen many miracles that God had already done. And he just made reference to these two incredible feedings of the 5,000 and the 4,000. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they, the disciples, said, well, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then Jesus said to them, but who do you say that? In other words, 
I've just asked you who do others say that I am, but now what I really want to know is I want to take this deeper. I want to get right up in your grill. I want to know who you say that I am. Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. He got it right. And he wasn't scared to make that statement. What I'd like to have been able to have read there was that, and they all said in unison, you are the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. But it didn't say that. The other level were probably sitting around scratching their beard or scratching their hair going, oh my God, how do I answer this? How do I lock it in place? Do I, I am I like to read this, do I get a, a lifeline or something to, to make sure that I can get the right answer? But without question, Simon said, I got it. You are the Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Could we answer that question tonight? Could we lock it in place? Would our lives reflect that? Is there enough, is there enough evidence in our lives that others see that would convict us of being a Christian? Ouch! That hurts, don't it? But is there enough evidence that could be gathered from you if you were going into a court of law and you were on trial for being a Christian, a Christ follower, one that could say without hesitation, without question, that I've locked it in place, I'm going to book it now, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God? Is there enough evidence? In our life, as we live in our dorms and our apartments and our houses, and we go to class, we eat in the cafeteria, we go home, we spend time with our family, with our peeps back at home. Is there enough evidence that would convict us? Or are we just pretending in certain places and with certain groups of our friends? Am I right? You see, Jesus made this extremely clear. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Never before had he explicitly laid down the truth and taught Peter one on one. He never done it. He never done any of the apostles the true fullness of his identity. But God the Father had opened Peter's eyes to the full significance of those claims and reveal to him who Jesus really was. He said, in other words, God had opened Peter's heart to this deeper knowledge of Christ by faith. Peter's faith. Peter was not merely expressing an academic opinion about the identity of Christ. But instead, this was a confession of Peter's personal faith. This, this is it. I'm, I'm laying it all out there. This is, this is it. And because of that, because of that stance, because of that silentness in his stance, look at what Jesus told him. Back 17, Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, or Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not delivered this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. It's your faith. It's faith like yours that I'm going to build the church for the future. I'm going to build the, the church that is going to last into the 21st century where you and I are. It is upon your faith that I'm going to build this church, and it is so strong, your faith, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. That's booking it now. That's locking it in place. How many of you have ever flown on an airplane? Okay. Got a couple that had flown. I love to fly. Love to fly. I've got about 
just over a million miles in the air. A lot to fly. I'd hop on a big bird in a 95 jet. I love it. But one of the worst experiences of my entire life is having to buy tickets. I hate having to buy tickets. Y'all ever had those problems? I hate buying tickets. It, it's always because nothing ever turns out right to me. I'll, I'll want that flight and I'll end up on this one. I want a non-stop flight and I'll have to go to God knows where in order just to sit for four extra hours to make it to my destination. Y'all too? Hate layovers. Absolutely despise layovers. But once it's booked, one of the hardest things you'll ever do is to cancel it. You ever realize that? Y'all ever tried to cancel a flight? <laughs> they keep your money. And they laugh at you. And then they thank you for flying the only skies. Because once you've got it down, once you've booked it, that's where you're supposed to be. Now maybe it's just me, but I've had a miserable what time of book and change flight. Always get there, always get home. But that process of getting there. Because I know where I want to go. I know the steps I want to take. I know the locations I want to get to and the locations I don't want to have to go to. I booked the flight. I both travel. <coughs> I book my relationship with Jesus. Now, are you saying, Jim, but I've got this relationship with Jesus. And I said, that's great. Do you act like it? Come on. Am, am I right? Do you live like it? Do you talk like it? Do you lay it down to where there's never a doubt that anyone that sees you is locked in place? When I see John on the campus or a Walmart or wherever he might be, is there ever a doubt in the way that he conducts himself, the way he speaks, and how he uh, goes about his actions, how he acts, how he says things? Is there any doubt in John's demeanor that reflects Christianity and you put your own name in there I've shared this with you before I think it's worthy of sharing again at any given time in any given day there's an average of 13 pairs of eyes that's watching you watching you now think that through at any given time on any given day there's an average of 13 pairs of eyes or 13 people that's watching you you will never know it. You won't be able to say, okay, it's you, and it's you, and it's you, and it's you. You won't be able to do that. But trust me, it's happening. This is a known fact. It is a proven statistic in marketing. 13 pairs of eyes are always watching you. Now, can those 13 pairs of eyes, if they were to collectively come together in a room and say, did you see so-and-so do this or say that or how they acted, what would they say? Here's a great question. Here's a great question. And I'll use me as an example. You know, I can't wait to hear your, your comments. If you could describe me in a bumper sticker that you have seen or that you could create, me, what would that bumper sticker say? What would the bumper sticker say? If you could describe me. Some of you don't know me as well as others. But if you could describe me as a bumper sticker, what would it say? Come on. Brandy? Add caffeine equal human. Add caffeine equal human. Okay. All right. Jess? I was going to say got coffee. Got coffee? <laughs> okay. All right. Someone else? How would a bumper sticker describe me? Well, some of y'all really have been with me a couple years. Come on, some of your juniors. Come on, jump in there. Some of you freshmen that's still trying to figure out the fat man. Come on. Jump in there. Jump in there. Okay, jump in there, sir. What would Jim do? 
What is your name? I like that. I like that. That'll probably be on my status later tonight. <laughs> That's probably pretty good. Okay, a couple more. Bumper sticker. Bumper sticker. One more. Okay, come on. Hamburger man. Hamburger man. Okay, I can see that's wrong. It'd be cheeseburger man. Okay, Tyler, what you got? Don't let the car fool you. My treasure's in heaven. Don't let the car fool you. I like that. I like that. That's, that's good. One more. Julie, you got one? No, you don't want me to say one. Sure, I do. Come on. Me. I have been mean to you. I have been mean to you. Okay, do all of those pretty well reflect what you think of me? Seriously, be honest. Yes? Yes? Andrew, you got one? Uh, this, is your, this is your only chance. <laughs> okay. Now, you know how I would probably describe me as a bumper sticker? Seriously. And by the way, y'all's a little bit. Here's how I would describe me. Doesn't play very well with others. Doesn't play very well with others. That's the truth. How would others describe you? How would others describe you? How would you describe yourself in a bumper sticker? How would you describe yourself in a bumper sticker? Tell me. Tell me. How would you describe yourself in a bumper sticker? Work in progress. Work in progress. I like that. Dolphin, what do you think? How would you describe yourself in a bumper sticker? <laughs> that in and of itself is a process. <laughs> no idea? Travis, jump in there. How would you describe Travis in a bumper sticker? Caution what? Okay. I have a hand up right in here. Uh, Say it again. Transforming. Transforming. Okay, I like that. Come on over here. Okay, Frank. Plant your penis roasted and slightly salted. Say that a little louder. Plant your penis roasted and slightly salted. That just so describes you. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, how about you? Charlie, how about you? Oh, sure. An average, unique girl. Say again. An average, unique girl. An average, unique girl. Okay. All right. Julie, and it doesn't matter which one opens up first, so I'll just say Julie. Okay, I say Julie, they go this. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, jump in there, Jim. That's okay, we'll lose next. Notice there's a difference between what others will see of you and what you see yourself. There was a difference between those 12 disciples, what others saw those 12 disciples, and what Peter come out and just blew their mind. Peter said, There's something in me that is about to erupt. And I know it, and I want everybody to understand how I feel and what I believe, because I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And he said it unashamedly. Unashamedly. And he spoke it with boldness. So I asked him, what is keeping you? What is keeping you from looking at? What is it in your life? Is it pride? Is it your reputation? That you don't want others to quite see you as a Jesus chick or that Jesus dude? What is it? 
Well, I've got a rep, don't we? The only problem is that we're more concerned about our rep than we are about our relationship with Jesus. I saw a great Twitter long ago, just before I got on campus. Well, when I read it, I almost dropped my phone because it really slapped me in the face. I mean, it hit me hard. And it said, do you spend more time flipping through Facebook than you do flipping through Scripture? Wow. That hammered me. That hammered me. So I ask you, what is it that's in your way? What's causing you to not be able to lock it down? What is causing you from being the, the young lady or the young man that God is calling you to? That he is laying out this everyday plan for, yet we refuse to do it. Many of us know about Jesus. We've read, we hear. And every now and then, if it fits our purpose, we believe. But we don't believe every day. We don't believe everything. We don't believe that the same God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament who sent us the Holy Spirit. So that would convict us and comfort us in the world that we live in today. We read about the fact that, that this man called Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago and that it was a gruesome death and, we, death. and we've even seen a movie called The Passion of the Christ. But yet, do we really know why he did it? That he did it simply because he loved us. You, me. And he did it so that you and I could have that relationship with him and that we might have eternal life. That's why he did it. Man didn't crucify him. Trust me. God allowed him to do that because God could have called him off that cross at any time. But he didn't because he knew that was the path to get us to eternal life. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say? If we can put our name in the front of that, and please don't answer that loud, it's like Jesus saying, Sean, who do you say that I am? Cody, who do you say? I uh, am yeah, Smith. Who do you say that I am? Chelsea. Who do you say? Go ahead and put you in. Because that's what is taking place. And so I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. If you have not nailed it down, if you've not locked it in place, do it tonight. Get it right. No questions, no hesitation. Get it right so that when you are out in this confines of this nice little H2O family, that there's no hesitation, there's no doubt as to who you are and what you stand in. Look at that. Right Michael, would you come up here for just a second, please? And uh, Michael, I'm going to ask you just to turn that music on your head for the for that incredible song.
Well, this is just kind of okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is it okay if we come to church on Sunday and talk to? I would have no problem at all. I want you to church. So that's the bottom line. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's right. That's Saturday night, seven. Seven thirty. Seven thirty in Osceola is the choir concert. And there are all kinds of groups and, uh, and uh, things that's going to sing, dance. TU crew, right, Travis? Is going to perform Saturday night. Well, you're going to get to see our very own Travis be performed Saturday night at the choir concert. And we're all going to whoop, whoop, whoop for Travis. Okay. And it's free. And it is free. Oh, it's free. Anything else? Michael, great job. Let's give it up for Michael. <laughs> you can see Michael again. You can see Michael again. All right, any other words? Tony, anything? Uh, freshman, if you are a freshman in